Wallabies away win over the Pumas, 41 points to 26. Believe it or not, the Wallabies were down by like nine points at half time, but managed to produce another good comeback in Argentina. I say another because I think they did the same thing the last time they were in Argentina back in 2018. But yeah, we'll go through some key events and stats and you guys can let me know your thoughts on this second of the two rugby championship games this weekend really good crowd good weather again slightly more pleasant time of day for those of us in new zealand being a uh, kind of breakfast time kickoff rather than middle of the night but um yeah good to good to see argentinian fans you know just getting to see their team play at home i know we had the scotland series but back into the rugby championship now and uh man their team came out pretty fired up i thought um to give them something to cheer for man like crema Oh, well, Lavanini started it with the big charge down on Nick White, and then Crema smashed um, Quade Cooper. Eventually, Argentina kind of knocked it on when they did get the chance to have some ball in um, in Wallaby's territory. But it didn't take them long to get on the board. Six minutes, Pablo Matero goes over. Um, as I said, relentless start, high pressure when they didn't have the ball, and lots of phases and stuff when they did have the ball. Um, and to be fair, they were kind of piggybacked there up the field that one from a uh, Aussie line-out infringement, which led to an Argentinian line-out in Aussie territory, which led to a couple of phases, and then uh, Carreras' has nice inside ball for Matera. So seven points to nil, good start. But then these two teams play a pretty frustrating game of who's going to concede the most penalties from the restart. And I do genuinely think, and we saw it in the Scottish series as well, that the restart... I mean, maybe more defense in this game as well. But the restart is certainly one of the biggest areas where the Argentinians are struggling. They pretty much immediately conceded a penalty and points, three points from the restart. So it's suddenly, uh, you know, seven points to three. But then the Aussies decided to give three points back. They conceded a penalty of their own. So it's 10-3. Um, finally, we saw a restart without a penalty being conceded. And Michael, Mike Adamson is... Um, you know, known to blow the whistle a fair bit, so you've got to be cautious when you've got that kind of ref in charge of the game. Finally, Carreras on 13 minutes, with no angle, managed to exit pretty much from a restart right back into the Aussies' half. So that was kind of great to see. And that territory allowed the uh, the Pumas to win another penalty. So they were 13-3 up. Everything's looking kind of happy days. Argentina can see the penalty from the restart. Honestly, I, I can't make this stuff up. It was genuinely just tit for tat who's going to concede more penalties from the restart for all kinds of things as well. Offsides and I think there was a high tackle in there and breakdown stuff, not releasing, like all kinds of stuff. It was a real mixed bag. But um, yeah, the Aussies from there decide to go for the touch. They go for the maul. Uh, they get advantage. They get it to the backs uh, with the advantage and Pitaya is able to go over for the try. So this is an example of conceding a penalty at the restart, directly conceding not only a penalty, but a try in this case. Like we've seen penalties go, but this time it's a try. So that's at least one try you can chalk up to not being able to kind of exit from the restart. So 13-10, proper game on. I literally write the note, who can concede the most penalties from restarts? Question mark Because that's that's what we're seeing. The points count is going up really fast because either, each side seems to be determined to gift the other one uh, you know, points from the restart. The Aussies conceded one at the breakdown from the resulting restart, so 16-10. And then we finally seem to get that phase, that pattern kind of broken. Um, to be fair though, Quade Cooper, who goes off injured in this game later, was kind of confidently uh, backing himself in um, especially taking the ball to the line. But also like going for 50-22s and whatnot. So like he had one that was pretty close to 50-22. He had a good line break. Another one where he goes close to the line. But his final offload um, hits James Slipper in the face. So it's kind of a blown chance. And then Argentina on their own end have a blown chance before halftime. Where their maul gets pretty well sacked by uh, Darcy Swain. But it was close then. It's kind of five meters out. So yeah, both sides a little bit guilty of missing some points when they were able to get some go forward ball, but also of gifting the opposition points, as I said, from the restart. The Aussies did concede one last line-out penalty before halftime, which Buffelli nailed to make it 19-10 at halftime. So it is that nine-point lead. Buffelli pretty much kicks all his goals in this game 
except the last one, which might have given the Argentinians a little bit of hope, believe it or not, towards the end. But um, anyway, that's the first half. Positions pretty even, but territories with the Aussies 65%. But the Aussies have knocked it on five times to two, and they've conceded 10 penalties to three. So it's, uh, it's kind of brutal for the Wallabies on those fronts. Both sides are tackling in the 90s, which is, um, you know, pretty high on the defense count. So just the one try apiece. <clears throat> Second half, though, man, it's absolutely Australia. You, apart from one kind of try against the run of play and a bit of uh, a, a mad end to the game, the Aussies really, really dominated the second half. They'll be pretty pleased. I should mention that they had a kind of late change to their lineup, the Aussies. Remember, Michael Hooper ended up flying back to Australia. I forgot to mention at the start, um, basically saying he wasn't in a fit uh, mental place to, um, to, to play. So he put his hand up, which is a pretty brave call. But um, yeah, he was kind of ably replaced by Fraser McCright, who's a really good player. But just unfortunate that he plays in the same position as Michael Hooper. He doesn't usually get much game time, but um, I thought he did pretty well, kind of having to step up for the big man. So hopefully uh, Hoops gets himself right, takes his time. Like we've seen plenty of big gun players take time off from the game. Dan Carter did it during his career. Richie McCaw did it during his career, just from a New Zealand point of view. So um, hopefully this uh, kind of works for um, for Hoops as well. But the team certainly were fighting for him and... Um, James Slipper mentioned that at the end. But anyway, uh, second half, the Argentinian man, the defense is desperate. Like, from kick return, Wright and Pattaya have a nice little kind of one-two move. Lavanini, of all people, is one of the guys desperately running back to get a, a covering tackle. I think it's Cabelli who stops uh, one of the Aussie forwards from going close. So it's, as I said, desperate defense. They're holding on by the skin of their teeth. Uh, Cooper, that's when he kind of buggers his leg up somehow. Um, again, taking the ball to the line like he's been doing for much of the game. He just seems to twist or slip uh, after putting on a fend. And then, um, yeah, he just goes down like he's been shot. He's got, a, I would say, a pretty serious injury. So uh, it's unfortunate for him, but it was a good chance for Reese Hodge to come on and get some proper game time uh, as a bit of a playmaker. But, yeah, hopefully Quaid recovers quickly. But as I said, first impression was it looked pretty serious. Finally, though, Ozzy did break through. It's a maul. Uh, it's McCright, the man who I just mentioned, who's in for hoops. Uh, he breaks off after the mall goes kind of close. And um, yeah, it's really game on at 19 points to 17. That being said, the Argentinians weren't done. Uh, they were under the pump, like I mentioned, for ages. Kramer had a nice line break. He beat Matt Phillip, uh, but the pass to Carreras didn't stick. They did get one, and it's their last try, second and only uh, try in the second half through um, Gonzalez. And that one was from kick return. And as I said, kind of against the run of play. Because the Aussies were really turning the screws. But um, yeah, kick return. It was Malia who backed himself. He passed it to, I think it was Matera. And Matera drew his man. I think it was Nick White. And then he passed it to Gonzalez. So a really well worked try from the Pumas on the counter. Really showing a bit of confidence. Which maybe we hadn't seen from, from that much under Ledesma. Um, but like I mentioned, that they, they were still definitely on the receiving end of a lot of rugby in that second half. So it was good for them. I mean, extended their lead back. So 26-17, the Aussie commentary team, especially Sean Maloney, didn't like the passes, but they showed an aerial shot and they seemed pretty flat. And I mean, when the guys are running at full tilt, the ball drifts forward anyway. So um, yeah, 26-17. But um, remember I talked about the Argentinians not catching restarts? They didn't catch the resulting restart, which is bad. But then the Aussies knocked it on anyway, because the Aussies were the first to the ball. So it seems like the Argentinians have gotten away with it. But from the resulting scrum, the Aussies get a penalty. From that penalty, they kick for touch. And uh, I think on the second attempt, because they get advantage, they go back for it. On the second attempt at a line-out maul, they get a penalty try. Penalty try means it's 26-24, they're two points behind, and Alamano goes to the bin. Comically, it's Lavanini who seems to be getting ordered off just by default, but no, 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 it's uh, it's four, not five. So Alamano goes to the bin. All that, the, the origin goes back to them not catching the bloody kickoff. So not only have they conceded seven points, but they're now a man down. They concede another penalty. Hodgie kicks that one, puts the Aussies in front. During the yellow card, 
The Aussies up for touch again. Why wouldn't you? They get advantage. Uh, they've got the extra man. The mall pays off. Fainga'a goes over. He's just kind of one-on-one -on -one with Cordero. Cordero's not going to stop him. So 34-26. You could argue that that mall, given that it was a man down, also is affected by the fact that previously they hadn't caught that restart. It's, uh, it's troubling. It seems like such a simple thing. But yeah, 34-26. Uh, the Aussies have got a kind of two-score lead there, just barely. I mentioned Boffelli missing the one kick that he really needed to get. 74 minutes, they get a scrum penalty on halfway. If he kicks that, it's properly game on before the end of the game. But that's the one kick. It's halfway, but it's the one kick of his that goes wide, sadly. So, um, yeah. The finish of the game was just a bit of a crazy finish. The Wallabies are chasing the bonus point, And uh, the Pumas are just trying to, I guess, chase the bonus point of their own. Get back within seven. Give the crowd something to cheer about before the end of the game. Um, both sides have chances, but it's the Wallabies who take the final one. With uh, Ikitao being the uh, the beneficiary of some good attacking play, they had to check the final. Or was it the uh, was it the pass from um, Paisami? It was one of the final passes anyway. They had to check it, but they ruled that that one was all good. So Aussies do walk away with the bonus point, forty one points to twenty six. Pretty bloody good away win for the Wallabies who. Just quietly, man, with the draw being the way it is, you know, could well be a threat in this competition. I know a lot of the talk uh, prior to the, the start of the weekends was that South Africa were the big-time favorites, even though the bookies had the All Blacks. But, um, yeah, man, I wouldn't be right enough the Wallabies just yet because their record over Australia, over Australia, in Australia against the, the box is, is really good. So, um, yeah, the stats finish. Run meters 325 to 399. The Wallabies have that. Uh, kicking from hand is pretty tight, 15 to 16, so nothing much in it. The Wallabies, though, more possession, 58%, more territory, 66%, and the second half especially, it's 60-plus percent for both. So they really turned the screws in that second half, barring that kick return try. Um, the Wallabies tackle in the 90s. The Pumas dropped down to the 80s in the second half. They have to make more tackles, 118 to 72. That's just with the Wallabies having that much more ball. The penalty count also evens up a bit. Remember, first half was really lopsided against the Wallabies. It finishes 14 to 16. So the Wallabies still can see two more. But at halftime, it was like 10-3. So, yeah, they evened that up a wee bit. Individuals, I mean, Malia on a losing shift, 83 meters and a defender beat and helped set up that try in the second half. Matera scores a try, 52 meters, two clean breaks, 12 from 13 tackles. That guy always puts in a proper shift. But for the Wallabies, McCright, like I mentioned, steps in for Michael Hooper. 11 from 11 tackles, 19 run meters. He loves a weak carry. Uh, Valtini gets man of the match. He has, like, how many carries was it? A bunch of carries for 48 meters. Beats the defender. Only four tackles from him, but ball in hand was a proper unit. Uh, Quade Cooper, before his injury, 64 meters. Five defenders beating the clean break. Like I said, really happy to take the ball to the line. But... Um, yeah, Paisami was good as well. So overall, right, you know, Pattaya looked dangerous. Um, the Maul, as always, looked dangerous. So, yeah, man. Uh, big confidence boost for this Wallabies team, despite all their injuries and despite another injury with um, with Cooper, you know, seemingly doing something in his leg and uh, Hooper, you know, not available, taking some time back home to, to recover. So, yeah. Good test of the Wallaby step, and they did it pretty well. Um, for the Pumas, honestly, get the bloody kick receipts right and practice more defense for next week. Easier said than done, because the Wallabies, especially with the McKellar influence uh, from the Brumbies, that's really a specialty. But anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts. Can you see the Pumas bouncing back next week, or do you think the Wallabies are going to be too good and they'll go two from two? If they do go two from two, they'll set themselves up really well when they go back home to face South Africa. Um, for watching these games in the Rugby Championship, Flow Rugby for you guys in the US. Uh, link down in the description for Flow. Watch the games on demand or live. Happy days. You guys let me know your thoughts. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.